are zakat and jizya both taxes well in a way they are both taxes but there is a world of difference between the two as far as jizya is concerned it was a penalty which was imposed on the people of the book it was a tax a penalty tax you can say which was imposed on the people of the book for intentionally denying uh, prophet of god and they were given this option that after this intentional denial they were not required to change their religion they could live on their religion but they would have to remain subservient to the muslim state uh, and the, one of the tokens of this was that they would be required to pay a certain tax to the government which is called the jizya but remember that this issue of intentional denial is something which was specific to the age of the prophets of god and the last time that this was practiced was of course in the times of prophet muhammad mm-hmm. after that this concept of jizya uh, is something which is not at all uh, Uh, relevant i mean when i say relevant it doesn't mean that is irrelevant what it means is that it is related to a particular law a particular regulation that was part of the life of the messengers of god and that is that when the almighty sends his prophets his messengers in this world they create miniature days of judgment in this world lesser days of judgment and the purpose of creating these lesser days of judgment is that they become a proof a validation of a greater day of judgment So therefore, it is a reminder which is preserved in the Quran that when we read the Quran, we f- we know that there were nations who were destroyed in this world because they indulged in such and such a thing. So today, if we are not being destroyed, it is not that uh, that destruction is not going to take place. It's just being deferred. Our accountability is just being deferred to the day of judgment. Their accountability took place in this world, and when they denied out of their own arrogance, a certain amount of punishment was Im- imposed on them. so the punishment on the people of the book in the times of the prophet of god the last prophet was paying this jizya which means of course that this jizya was specifically related to individuals uh, to whom this conclusive communication of truth was made as a result of which this these lesser days of judgment were created zakat on the other hand is something which is imposed on muslim citizens and it is only it is the only tax which a muslim citizen is required to pay uh, other than that uh, if you have to if it is it is required that more taxes have to be imposed on muslim citizens then it has to be through their consent in other words you can say that zakat is the only tax which a muslim government can impose on its citizens even without their consent and of course the concept of zakat needs further elaboration maybe uh, in some other session because it's just not a 2 and 1/2% uh, taxation rate on your savings which is generally understood zakat has a has a much wider connotation it has different rates 2.5% 5% 10% and even 20% and if you look at all these percentages you'll realize that they are quite sufficient uh, if all of them are invoked to run a state because you see taxes they are the income uh, which is generated to run a state and obviously the 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 immediate question which might arise when we say that zakat is the only tax that would be that is zakat sufficient to provide funds to run a state and i would say yes because this is this not just a 2.5% zakat on savings once a year it has a much wider connotation and the other thing that perhaps also needs to be although it's a, it's a, not directly related to this discussion but needs to be pointed out because you're talking about the income of a state is the issue of uh, kharaj which uh, are uh, which the almighty has mentioned i mean not directly mentioned but we find uh, the quran mentioning the fact that there are certain things which cannot be given in private custody they have to belong to the state and if they have to be given in private custody then you can impose a rent on them thus for example if you're renting out i mean if you're if you're giving some land on lease then that land is not going to belong to the person who's going to own it it's like a lease which is like a, a rent which a government can impose so two of the very i would say prominent ways of income or sources of income for a muslim state one of them is this rental income which is imposed on land which is bought by people and you start building houses on that and second is a more comprehensive uh, concept of zakat in which the income of the state is is guaranteed to be much much more than what we think could have been if zakat is just 2 and 1/2% 